some real love and attention. It's a great day at Flash Button here. We just got this crazy pedal score in. Actually, lots of other fun stuff as well, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. Right, come over to our early incoming queue here. This is kind of where stuff comes in. Once we buy it, we know it might need a little bit of work. It goes right to this shelf. And then when you're ready to do some tech work, you just come over here and grab what you want to work on. And there's been these, this bass and this guitar that have been in the corner for quite a while now. One even says, Alex Video. And they need a little more restoration work than a lot of the stuff we take on. So today, it's finally time to get into some cool restorations. I also want to point out this nice note that Kaylee left for us on this one. This is not a tutorial on how to restore your vintage guitar. This is just some fun, a little peek behind the curtain. Just want to show you guys what we kind of do on a daily basis. And these are two pretty extreme examples. Most stuff that comes in as you see from the videos is pretty clean, just needs some regular TLC. But these, these are another level, so come along and let's bring them back to life. Let's see what we're working on. I don't know. Case doesn't even close, probably need a new case. Yeah, this gig bag is uh, straight to the garbage once we make sure there's nothing in here. And look at that. We have a very cool Fender American Special Stratocaster. And it's all here. Everything here looks to be original. And obviously it's got some wear like this, but this actually isn't in like the work shape. This has just not been taken care of in a while. And somewhere under all this grime, it's hopefully a nice example of one of these guitars. I would put this on the bench and then I'm gonna show you guys the bass as well. What the f I didn't know that Damien was still here. Oh yeah, he's been here. He slipped by without Have you seen this one, Damien? It's in mint condition. I love that this has all the case candy, original case, the whole thing. But then it's in this condition. Man. Look at the back. Really should have had Kaylee do this. This is going to be quite the chore. Let's go over to the bench and let's start with the guitar. All right, first things first. We don't need this strap. First thing we're going to do here is just get these old strings off. Under here is a good strap, under all this grime. We'll start with this. Our friends at Music Nomad, not sponsored. But if you want to sponsor something to hit us up, let's talk about it. You know how to get a hold of us because you did send us all this stuff. I'm just trying to get the, the first layer of dirt off of most of the guitar right now. When's the last time you cleaned the guitar? The other day when we played a show, I had to clean my own guitar. For the shop, I'm sure it was recent, more recently than I'm thinking, but I don't remember. Like, I'm sure I've, I've cleaned a guitar in the last month, maybe? When's the last time you cleaned a guitar? My guitar before the show. <laughs> we have people for this now. I don't. I usually clean. There was the one tour that Kaylee and Eric came with, uh, Secret Keeper, and they were kind enough to take care of that stuff. Only Alex's guitars, though. Mostly because I don't trust other people with I was gonna say, I think they were willing. <laughs> Once I have that, most of the rest of this is somewhat clean. Then we will take it apart and actually start to do the deep flame. Now, you could just go order all of these parts very easily since this is a fairly modern guitar, but that's no fun. And also I like, when I say all original, if I can control it, I want it to be like the actual original stuff from the factory, even if we have to clean it up a little bit. I like to keep it all together when we can. Sometimes replacing stuff is inevitable and is the right option. If this was like a, a proper like vintage piece, I'd actually be like, I don't know exactly how I, I organize it, but I would 
be noting that like this was the E, you know, the each tuner where it originally was, even which pocket each screw was in, but on a modern Strat like this, it's all fairly plug and play parts. You don't really need to stress about that. If you're working on a 50 Strat, you should mark exactly which hole everything was in. So you can put it exactly where it was. A lot of times uh, America and Mexico guitars will have like little stickers in here that do have some helpful info, which is nice, but this is pretty easy to figure out that this is a sunburst American special strap. Yeah, you've got some, uh, so you've got a sticker here, you got one here. So that'll give you some info. Texas special pickups you can see there. We love that. All original wiring it looks like. I don't think anyone's messed with any of this. This is cleaning up nicely. I'm actually really happy with this. A little bit goes on. Deoxid D5. They haven't sent us anything, so it's definitely not sponsored by them. But you can hit us up. Would be nice to uh, take this. I joke about, I guess we were joking about saying I really don't do a lot of guitar tech work in the shop because I'm doing other stuff. But another big reason I know is because I don't have my own bench. This is Kaylee's bench. She's already done for the day. So now I can use it. That's always good. I might be able to keep the original solder. We'll see. But we'll definitely need to strip that out and actually make that proper. As per Kay's recommendation, have white vinegar, and she said, just soak all that stuff in vinegar overnight, and it'll be okay. So we're gonna do that. You use some, some fret polish. A little goes a long way but a lot goes even further. Now that we've got the metal part soaking and the strat is starting to shape up, let's actually transition over to the base. Let's see what we gotta do to that one. This one is an American Standard from 2010 as well. These came from the same person, so presumably these have been a pair probably since they were new actually. And I backed it, they just said, I want a sunburst strat, I want a sunburst jazz bass. That'll last you a lifetime if you take care of them. <laughs> They'll still last you a lifetime if you don't take care of them. <laughs> this is where we come in. There you go. There's some more rhyme. There's no shortcut. This really does just take all day. Like this is not a five minute job. Like if we weren't filming, this would probably still all in, take over four hours per guitar. Probably like six to eight actually to do it correctly. start actually taking the crack and getting this a little bit cleaner. If this was a vintage guitar, you would not be doing that because the way that they like silk screen these now, there's lacquer over that with a lot of vintage stuff. You would have just potentially started to peel the label off or the logo off doing that.
right now I've got some fretboard conditioner on the neck, so that's just kind of taking some time to, to soak and work the conditioner actually into the wood as it looks like it hasn't been conditioned in a while. And I'm gonna do a bunch of passes of that just to get the wood fully conditioned again. It's slowly coming together. Go ahead and uh, submerge all this in some white vinegar. It's gonna get left overnight as well. And I think we're gonna come back to this one. We're back. It's been nearly 24 hours and the vinegar is still bubbling. And hopefully all these are gonna clean up nicely. It smells great. I will say, already, notably better. These aren't gonna be perfect, and my goal wasn't to make this guitar look brand new, as it, it just wouldn't. <laughs> Let's be realistic, but it's actually turning out pretty good. The rust is coming off nice and easily. We are using just a touch of this penetrating oil to help lubricate things. And I said a little goes a long way with the deoxid, but a little, a really, really small amount goes a really long way with this stuff, so don't get crazy. It's not perfect, still looks like an aged piece of hardware, but it's getting a lot better. I know some people go further and use even more intense solutions here. Uh, I know like Brasso works for certain stuff, uh, but for me, I'm really trying to just get this really clean and unoxidized. I'm gonna want it, I wanna get it as shiny as I can, but my goal is not for this to look like a brand new piece of hardware. It's just supposed to be a well-functioning piece of hardware in the condition that it's in. Yeah, it's actually cleaning up pretty nice. I'm like at best decent at all of this. And people ask all the time, like, oh, what advice do I have for people doing guitar teching? Which like, I'm a great example of I'm, I'm a good enough guitar tech to get most things done, whether it's on the cleaning side or it's on more like electronic side of things with uh, soldering pickups or if it's on the tech side of running XLR or patching your rig together, all that kind of stuff. I can get all that done, but I am like the least exceptional person in all of this and I still get gigs and it all comes down to just being a good hang and knowing business and knowing how to read a room and networking without networking, if that makes sense. Just be a genuine person and uh, talk to the right people and you'll probably get somewhere. It's not necessarily just about being like the absolute best at your job ever. It's about working with other people and knowing how to be part of a team. So uh, if this video is any testament to that, like I can get the job done, but um, I don't know anything you don't. I'm just, just teching. You want to make sure they're snug, but obviously don't over tighten them. There's no reason to. Fortunately, we had a spare. I mean, that's about as... Yeah, oh, that's better than mine. Yeah. You know, 
want it all the way up. So I'm about to go in there, meet with that solder. I had to add just a little bit of solder, but it's definitely not going anywhere now. So. It's actually like better than you would think for doing nothing. Take our gauge set and then just kind of set everything to the radius. How do you know it was 9.5? For all this guitar has been through, the neck's actually really straight. Could probably dial out just a, just a touch of relief. It feels really good though. Perfect. What I'll sometimes do is go even higher up the neck to see if I can exaggerate the discrepancy and then that makes it a little easier to make my adjustment. It's feeling pretty good. We're gonna test out the electronics real quick on this one. And if everything is good here, we're gonna call it a night as it's getting really late and start working on the bass tomorrow. So let's make sure this works really quick. I think this is a good stopping place for today. We will resume tomorrow. All right. Time to start getting the space back together. Once again, we'll start with the neck. It's time to see what we can do with these tuners. Not too bad, we're not done yet, but serviceable. I get asked a lot how we have so many listings on reverb and it's because I literally have like four people working on it nonstop, including, my, including myself, I guess five. So it, it really does take a team to get all that done. I think at, at the point of shooting this, we have probably 650 listings somewhere on there uh, between, you know, on our website, on Reverb. It's the same listings on, on both. And uh, it just takes time, just like this. But I think it would be very difficult for you to have that many listings as an individual without a team. So we're very grateful for the team. If you're a madman, you, you might be able to, but you'd also have to like, I mean, I got up to almost what, 300 on my own. At that point, it'd be really difficult to like be able to source the stuff, do the deals and do all the listings and do the tech work. It's like you could do one. It'd be really hard to do the whole thing. There's a lot that's not listed that we're always working on getting up. It's a lot in queue. There's not as much in our like back stock as there's been in the past. I've talked about doing a video of going through the archives and showing you guys all the stuff that isn't listed uh, for one reason or another. And maybe we'll still do that one day, but that that is shrinking. I'm trying to get everything up. It feels nice and smooth, which is good. I don't know if you're coming back from that because it is chrome. So once the chrome is gone, the chrome is gone. As I kind of anticipated, the tuners are, it's, it's nice because everything is very functional. Everything turns really smoothly, but they don't look perfect um, as they're not. And, uh, that was kind of to be as expected with the amount of oxidation I was on.
So, it's actually a two pack of strings here, so we only need the one. Next, nice and straight. So that's good. I think we can see the action come down soon. Obviously, this needs some adjustment, but like way less than you would think. All right, it's feeling like a bass. Let's go into the studio and let's check it out. Now that we've got this thing cleaned up and set up, I'm really enjoying this bass. This is your Fender American Standard, so it's just your benchmark of a jazz bass, and it sounds great, it plays great, it does the thing. Nice board, all the things I look for. I'm liking this one. I also really like how this finish is aged over time. You probably saw as we were cleaning it up. This is definitely not like a new finish, but the way that it kind of shines up while still being a little dull, if you will, looks really cool, and it's just, it's a classy bass. This Strat really stands out. This is an exceptional Strat, and we've had a lot of Strats. I really like the neck on here. It's definitely on the slimmer side, and there's just something about it that you can really dig in on this, and you, you, you get a lot out of it. The Texas Special pickups sound great. Um, I'm currently using like a Marshall J&P tone through the Kemper, and I think it works really well together. Like I say all the time, would love to keep this. I have a lot of Strats, so probably can't justify that, but whoever ends up with this, I think is gonna be really, really happy, because this, uh, this is a serious Strat here. That's a good one. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. This was just supposed to be something fun. Most guitars that we have come through aren't ever this dirty, so this was definitely a, uh, an outlier. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching the process, and I'm personally really, really happy with how both the Strat and the Jazz Bass came out. They're great instruments, they're ready to be played, they're not mint, they don't look like they're mint, and that's, that's not what they're for. They're for getting played and taken out and enjoyed, and I think whoever has both these next is really gonna like them. I think you guys always take the time to watch these videos, We'll see you in another one soon. Let us know down below in the comments if you've had any projects that you found that have turned out really, really cool, or let us know if you've had any that haven't turned out good as well. We always love to hear it. We'll see you guys soon. Bye.